Hi, welcome to the E7 unit on interpolation. In this unit, we'll recap what regression and interpolation are used for, and then study polynomial interpolation, and finally, spline interpolation. Remember, when we introduced regression, that we talked about regression and interpolation as learning functions from data. In other words, finite amount of XY data that's believed to come from a functional relationship is presented to the analyst, and the goal of the analyst is to derive the function that produced the data. That's what regression and interpolation do. And then once that function is derived, prediction can be carried out on values of x for which the corresponding y is unmeasured. Let's quickly recap that by looking at some of the slides. In both problems, training data is given, pairs of xy data believed to come from a functional relationship. In interpolation, the goal is to find a function from a specified class that exactly matches the data points, so that find an f in some fi function class such that f of xi equals yi for all the training points. Any such function is called an interpolator of the training set. The obtained function, as I mentioned, is often used for prediction. Given another value of x with y unknown, estimate or predict what's the corresponding value of y if it had been generated from the same process which produced the training data. The basic tenets of interpolation are that the measured data is believed to be accurate. Any complex variability in the data is thought to be truly indicative of the underlying phenomena that's producing the data, and therefore the functional representation should at least pass through all the data points. All three of these examples, the functional representation does pass through the data points. There's no reason to expect wild variability between the data points as well. Now the smoothness of the interpolating function, here piecewise constant, here piecewise linear, and here something that's much smoother, should depend on prior knowledge or domain-specific expertise about the phenomena that's producing the data. We also talked a little bit about the difference between the two. The case was made for using interpolation to get, for instance, an accurate fast approximation to a particular integral that might be useful in an application. The reason was that the data, pairs of R's and integrals, would be obtained by careful numerical integration. It would be repeatable and not really subject to any appreciable error. Therefore, it would make sense that the fitting function should pass through the training points. With that recap of what interpolation was, let's now start to learn about how it's done.